So how do we do this? First, we have to understand we have to understand a few things. We, you know, this is just simple analysis. This is understanding where are our stories getting out. If you look at number one up there, we, you know, we want to have the effect of making sure that we're informing and educating the American people. This is not about influencing. Influence is not a bad word, by the way. You don't want to deceive. Obviously, we don't deceive. That is not what we do as public affairs professionals. However, when you inform somebody with facts, when you educate them, you have just then done what? influence their thinking in a proper manner because you are allowing them to make a better judgment a more informed judgment of what is happening so that they can make their own decisions and so what we have to do first is understand where's our story getting out if you look on the upper left I've got a lot there's a whole briefing on this meet your army hashtag meet your army I say again to the camera hashtag meet your army but uh, in, in all honesty, you know, we're trying to figure out, and we know where those strategic top line messages are, get, are, are getting out nationally, regionally. We know who's telling them. So we, I can tell you with bubbles across America, hotspot America, and tell you where the stories are getting out and where they're not. And I know exactly where that is. We've got that analysis done. The next thing I can do is I can figure out where the 17 to 24 year olds live. I can overlay on top of that where are the 17 to 24 year olds that we want to communicate to recruit into our force. Next thing I can do is figure out where are the mass media markets, the population centers. Pretty easy, right? Mass media centers, boom. Population centers, boom. Then I can figure out where are the community and business, you know, influencers, those that are the leaders in the communities, localities, and regions of America. We can figure out where they are and kind of prioritize them as well. And it, you took at this and you got a stacked set of overlays. If they are all red, you look at which are the deepest red, and you can say, and I know where our stories are not getting out, like I said, and you can figure out that's where we need to go. That's where we are not telling our story, where it is most important for us to get our story out. And what we are going to do is tier, tier the country into the areas that we prioritize to try and get the story out where it's not. That's what we do as public affairs professionals. We don't react to every query that comes in and just react to what the media wants us to do and be passive and just have an RTQ. My team knows the, three, the two acronyms that I just don't like are RTQ PAG, RTQ PAG. Respond to query, public affairs guidance, respond to query, public affairs guidance. Great, I know we must do that, but we don't need to spend 80, 90, or 100 percent of our time sitting back on our haunches in a reactive and passive capacity waiting for the media to ask us a question and getting, getting, giving them a rote answer. We need to get out and actively, aggressively, as public affairs professionals, figure out where we're not and get our story out and tell the Army story. Tell the Army story to the audiences of America where we are not using that analysis that I just talked about and writing a campaign plan that demonstrates where regionally and functionally geographically where those places are and then prioritize the cities and the locations and start to put together a toolkit for our public affairs professionals that tells us how to do this and to maximize those platforms and the organizations so that we gain unity of action because what I don't want to, to happen is what often happens. Often we have somebody that goes out, talks to an audience, goes to an event, does something. They're not necessarily on message. They haven't maximized all the other resources and the organizations and the platforms that are in and around the community. And what happens? They go off like a sniper round, maybe, or they go off like a blank round of information. What I want to do is deliver informational intercontinental ballistic missiles that spread with multiple reentry vehicles of information to clusters of American audiences where we are not. And I'm going to show you a couple of platforms, how we started this as we're rolling this campaign plan out, how we're trying to do that. Next slide. I, now the process just showed you our planning process. So I had to go out and be the wind dummy for this and piloted this. So, and so what do you do? And we're learning a lot. Where should we go? Where should we not go? Where are the media markets easier to get into? Where is there a hook? An audience hook or a platform or a way for us to get in. Big markets, small markets, medium markets. 
Medium markets, I think, is where we need to go. And we know where we're not. This was an example to proof the principle. This is Indianapolis, Indiana over Labor Day. I have the Army Marketing and Research Group. They're the ones that do the brand management, do the recruiting of young Americans out there. What is Indianapolis famous for? Speedway, sir. Speedway. Indianapolis 500, NHRA, National Hot Rod Association. Roger. So this happened to be the Nationals over Labor Day, NHRA Nationals. The Army has Tony Schumacher and the Army Dragster was part of the Nationals. And so there you have a platform. You have a hook. We brought in the Army Rock Band, the volunteers, 50,000 folks that we know are there because they want to come to watch the NHRA because that's what Americans do. And they do it in Indianapolis. It was the Nationals. So there you had Army Marketing Research Group. We had the Army Rock Band, the volunteers coming in. We had an audience. Where are the strategic messengers delivering strategic messages to different audiences, not just there at the raceway? Using that raceway in the NHRA platform to jump off of, to, to be an ICBM, to deliver informational clusters to different audiences. And using the other platforms and organizations in Indianapolis that are there every single day. This was that. So this was my schedule. 0600 until 2100 at night. About 11 different engagements. It takes planning. It takes planning. It takes coordination. It takes synchronization. It took a one-person public affairs officer advance to make sure that they knew the routes to get to all these different places in Indianapolis <laughs> and to do a little, little bit of an, uh, an ad on advance. You know, but five, five local media interviews, Indianapolis Star, American Legion Magazine, December, a two, over two million readership just came out. We're still measuring performance and effectiveness. That just came out two weeks ago. This was, this was in September. Talking to civilian aides, the Secretary of the Army, reserve ambassadors to link in with veteran service and military service organizations to talk soldier for life, veteran handoff, some of our strategic top line messages. Radio interviews, radio interviews that we've still seen bumps on to this day. Talking to ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Corps and other young, youngsters that are thinking about coming into the, or, or part of a program there at IUPIU or excuse me, QI, University of Indiana, and taking advantage of a lot of the things that are already there. And we're able to do this, and, be, and, and what you see here is, as of now, we haven't even put a couple of updates since this. This is a little bit of an old storyboard. But what you see is, and, and is a lot of traditional media getting the word out that wouldn't have happened with just that, that one, you know, we, we, you know with, with the... Uh, Army Marketing Research Group was doing a great job talking to local influencers. They were talking to teachers. They were doing a lot of local influencing. But I took that and tried to raise it up to another level and make this, you know, a little bit bigger. Social media. Also, pre-planning social media. And how do you use Twitter and other social media aspects to try and get your word out and learning what it takes to do that. And then the social media buzz that comes off of this trip and the effect indicators number of tweets, number of impressions, you know, throughout the day. And pre, you know, pre-cooking your tweets, understanding, pre-tweeting the influencers so they know that you're coming. How do you do it? You don't just get there, show up, and start tweeting. It takes a plan. And how do you do that? Who do you effectively engage up front to make sure that you've got this set, both from a traditional and social media standpoint, so when you get in, you're rocking on all fronts, on all platforms that we can communicate to those audiences. Measuring effectiveness is going to take a little bit, a little bit of, a uh, little bit of time. Effectiveness, really, in my mind, is gained by how we've got after those three sources of power, the three manifestations of the source of power of the American people: dollars, recruiting, and trust and confidence. We'll be able to measure that. We're trying to figure that out in the long run, but that's a long time. I can tell you one thing: if we don't do this, we will not be effective. That's for sure. This, took, this was two people. You know, myself and one other person executed all of these. It took a lot of planning up front, though. And we are building the toolkit and the planning process to be able to hand to public affairs officers throughout the Army so that they can execute Meet Your Army engagements at their level across the Army via this campaign plan.